about to look at one of the simplest yet most vital elements of AS economics, <coughs> the circular flow of income. What this tends to look at is how an economy uh, operates on a very, very simplistic basis. We, make, we start off with the assumption that this very, very simple economy, almost like a desert island if you wish, has only two economic agents, two players involved. One, we have the households, which constitute the people, and we have firms, which constitute the uh, manufacturing or process of, of making something. Now, if we'd say, well, who owns all the, uh, who owns Britain? Well, we say the people own Britain. The British people own Britain. Fair enough. So, what does owning Britain consist of? Well, uh, we own all the property, which we call land. Uh, we own the, uh, the, we are the workforce, which we call uh, labor. And we own all the money, which we call capital. And we provide this land, labor, and capital to the firms in order for them to take this, these basic raw materials and uh, process them to add value and to create something uh, more valuable to us. Uh, so when they, you can take some example where we provide them with the land and labor to provide uh, raw lumber and the firms add value by turning that raw lumber into a table and they sell these goods or services back to the households. In exchange, the households buy the goods and services, what's called expenditure on goods and services. So that puts money back into the firms on goods and services. In exchange, the, the firms take the money that we spend on the goods and services and send that back to the households by way of uh, wages and rent for the land, uh, interest on uh, loans, and uh, profit share, which we call dividends. And in this respect, this basic diagram effectively shows how money goes round and round in the system in a very basic stuff. The households send the basic materials to the firms, the firms make the goods and services, we buy the goods and services, and they send the money back, and it goes round and round like that. We see here also, this helps us explain the famous economic formula O equals Y equals E, because we take a look at this and say, well, let's say if we just stop the money here when it's going through here, the wages rent, that's what we call our income, or Y at this stage. And when the money flows on past here, and it goes to here, the production of goods and services, we call O, the output. And here, it's in our expenditure on goods and services, equal E. So we can see that O equals Y equals E. It doesn't matter. National income, national expenditure, national output, they're all part of the same thing. They're, all, they're just different stages going through. Now, we add a little bit of uh, extra to this because this is unrealistic. This is not including many other um, vital agents in the economic process, namely governments and foreign institutions and foreign nations. And what we see here is that in this case here, this basic situation, if, I, if a worker is earning a thousand pounds a year, or a thousand pounds a month, he is assumed to spend that thousand pounds a month, but that's not entirely true, is it? Let's say if we were to save 200 pounds a month, uh, I'd earn a uh, thousand pounds, but then I'd spend 800, but where's the other 200 go? Well, it goes in what, I, what was called withdrawals from the system, in the way of savings is one of them. Another way is, again, realistically, you earn a thousand, the government say taxes you at 10%, you have to pay a hundred pounds of your thousand pound earning out. Where does that go? That goes out of the system via taxes. And finally, instead of us buying goods and services produced by a British firm, we buy it from a foreign firm, our money is sent abroad for the purchase of that good, and so anything we import also takes money out of the system. But just as we have withdrawals, we've also got injections. 
and injections consist, really, you can say of the corollary to these things. When we save money, that will eventually come back into the system in the way of investment. As the government taxes, it comes back into the system eventually as government spending. And just as we send money out uh, to buy imported goods, likewise, when a foreigner buys our goods, they send us the money, and that comes in the way of exports. So I tend to think of this as almost like a large bouncy castle, if you like. Air is pouring into it, and air is being extracted, and you want to maintain a proper equilibrium here. That is, your exports should be approximately equal to your imports, what you tax is what should be spent, and what you save should be equivalent to what your uh, savings. If at any stage this becomes unbalanced, and your injections are far more than your withdrawals, your withdrawals are more than your, uh, your injections, then you will either get the, uh, the circular flow of income inflating unhealthily in the event of too large an extension, or starting to sag as the air leaks out of it, if, for instance, our imports are far greater than our, in, uh, our, our um, for imports are greater than our exports. Therefore, this is a very basic, simple model showing how an economy operates, why O equals Y equals E, and exactly how the withdrawals and the injections fit into the uh, diagram. Thank you.